Hello, what's up, YouTube? Ronnie you Sweat, and actually, in this tutorial, I'll show you how you can easily create highly realistic skin texture in your images in just Photoshop. So, I'm just going to be using Photoshop 2020 for this very tutorial. And if I told you find it helpful, don't forget to like this video and don't forget to subscribe this channel. If I told you're watching and you're not subscribed yet to this channel, so this is going to be a very easy and very short tutorial for you to easily understand each and everything and step. So Usually when we are retouching images, especially as that use frequency separation, there are times when you miss out on the textures and you don't have textures in the image. For example, just look at these areas. They are lacking enough textures right on the nose area, the chin area, and some parts here. So your cases may be different depending on the image that you have to work on. So you may be able to, or you may need to work on the textures in the overall image or individually work and apply or create those textures and apply them in specific areas in your photos so you have to come to your image right here and you create an empty layer so after creating it you can rename it to textures and after doing that just come and fill this empty layer with 50 percent gray so just come make sure it is selected then you come to edit then you come to fill and you come to contents make sure you select 50 percent gray the blend mode has to be normal opacity 100 percent make sure preserve transparency is not checked right here and simply come and hit ok so when you click on ok come and change the blending mode to overlay right here and you're going to get back the image the way it was meant to be initially before so you want to apply the textures on this <coughs> texture layer right here so you just want to convert it into a smart object meaning you want to change the values later on after applying them on this lab because usually we may make a mistake and you may want to change or alter the settings you may have applied in the texture layer so just come right here to the texture layer and simply right click on it then you come down here and you're going to come to convert to smart object or convert to smart layer so just come and do that and when you have this icon it means that you are going to be or you'll have converted your layer into a smart object so the very first thing you're going to do you're simply going to come to filter and you come down to the camera row filter so when you come to camera row filter you're simply going to come to the effects right here and you're going to come to grain so you're just going to add grain or noise to this gray layer so i'm just going to take up the radius so since my image is more of a closer portrait, my intensity for the grain is going to be a little bit higher. So I'm just going to leave it at around 88. And for the size, this is more of how big you want the grain to be. So the higher the size, the more intense or the more they will be closer to the image. So just don't want to take this overboard. It's going to be using around 33 and the roughness it depends on how soft or how smooth you want your grain to be so i'm just going to take up the roughness <clears throat> just a little bit higher up to around 40. 40 looks good and i'm just going to come and simply click ok so meaning we have applied this and if at all you feel like it is not enough for your image you can simply double click you can simply double click right here on the camera row filter option and you can come back and alter or change those effects right here and simply commit by hitting ok so after doing that we're just going to come back right here we're going to come to filter and you're going to come <coughs> down here to stylize so when you come to stylize just come right here to emboss so what you have to take into consideration is the direction your light was coming from so for my image right here since i have more light in this area as you can see this area is a little bit brighter than this area so meaning my light might have been coming from the top left hand corner so when you come to the angle make sure you measure this pointer points in the angle where, where your light was coming from so i'm just going to be leaving it at that and after doing that, you can see right now we have some texture that is all that has been created within this very image. So the amount depends on 
how close or how far your, your image is so make sure you're really careful with the amount so i'm just going to take it a little bit higher as i'm looking at uh, my image so i'm just going to take it higher so at around 97 looks good and the height basically it depends on how distant you want this effect to be so the height is going to spread the pixels even further as you can see in the image so i just don't want my pixels to be a little bit closer so i don't want to take this a little bit higher so at around a height of around two or three can work for this very image and you can see we have those nice and realistic textures rather so just come and click on ok so this looks a little bit weird so what i'm going to do i'm just going to add a little bit of gaussian blur to this very effect so i'm just going to come to filter blur and i come to gaussian blur and i'm just going to look at the image take the radius all the way down to 0 0.1 and simply take it up up the point when i feel like uh, the effect is okay for me so for this case i'm just going to leave it at around 0 0.4 0 0.4 looks natural and realistic to me yeah 0 0.4 looks great and i'm just going to come and hit okay so if at all you feel you're not satisfied with the results created out of your skin texture effect you can see everything is right here so if at all you feel you want to change the gaussian, the gaussian blur right just come right here double click on this word right here so when you double click you can come back to the gaussian blur and you alter it so that is the advantage of using a smart filter or a smart layer and you can come and change it and hit ok so after doing this you can notice that the effect or the textures are all over the place so just don't want it to affect the overall image so if at all your image is lacking our textures in the overall skin area of your portrait you can come and just come right here make sure the texture layer has been selected and simply hold down the alternate key on the keyboard or alt and you click on this add layer mask icon so hold down the alternate and simply click on this add layer mask icon so when you left click Hold down the alternate and simply left click on this add layer mask icon and it's going to invert or hide the effect. You can see it is hidden behind this black mask. Remember in Photoshop, white is going to reveal and black is going to hide. That is why the textures have been hidden from the image. So we're just going to come right here under the brushes and simply get a brush. Make sure it is a soft round brush, meaning the hardness has to be at zero and come to the opacity right here make sure it is 100 and for the flow i'm going to be using i'm just going to be using a flow of around just going to be using a flow of around 67 and i'm going to play painting or i'm going to paint through the areas i want to have textures or the areas that are missing textures in this very photo so i'm just going to come using a white brush make sure you have white on the foreground if at all you don't have black or white right here simply click on these two small boxes and in order to switch uh, between black and white you can use x on the keyboard so x is the shortcut that is going to switch between black and white so make sure white is on top and simply come and reveal the textures in the areas that are missing or lacking textures so just come and paint through those areas so I'm just going to take down my flow a little bit because that was too much or it was a little bit aggressive. So I'm just going to paint through the areas I want to have textures in this very image. Just going to come to the chin area and simply reveal or create those textures in those areas that are lacking textures in the image. So you can see now the textures are evenly distributed distributed in this very image so just look at the overall before and after for our textures so this was the image before and after before after so this is how to create highly realistic skin textures within photoshop and if at all you have loved this tutorial don't forget to like this video and don't forget to subscribe this channel if at all you're watching and you're not subscribed to this channel ronix from ronix photography thank you for watching i'll see you in yet 
more amazing tutorials and don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating.